welcome to today's video. I am so excited that you're here and spending this time with me. I have a really fun video planned for you all. If you are new, my name is Christine and I am a full-time pre-K teacher, but I also just opened up my very own online children's boutique. So the first thing we're going to do in today's video is actually a fun inventory unboxing and haul and I'm going to be showing you guys the new styles that I'm getting in at the boutique. Everything will be linked down below so if you're interested in, in anything go and check it out and then also go ahead and follow us on Instagram because I do post a lot of fun like giveaways and new releases and different things there. But then after the haul, we are going to do some fun crafting with my little one. I know when I have the summers off, I like to really maximize our time together. I also try to avoid the little boredom meltdown. So these crafts are really fun. They're easy and they're also things that can kind of hold your kids' attention. So we'll get to that later, but let's go ahead and get into the haul. All right, so when I unbox the items, they do come in these little bags. And when I ship them out to you, I leave them in these bags as just sort of like an extra level of protection. But let's go ahead and open this up and show you our first item. This was actually extras that I got of one of our pre-orders and my little one has already worn this. And we got so many compliments because it is just the perfect outfit to go watch a summer baseball game. How cute is this? It's actually a little romper. As you can see, it's really stretchy, elastic waistband, little shorts. Um, the beauty of these outfits is that they are so super soft, but they're also made to kind of grow with your child. So they're really stretchy, great for running around and playing in. They, they don't just look cute. You can actually wear them, go get messy, go play. They wash great. So this is the first little thing. It's a little romper with a baseball print. I love the little ruffle detailing up around the shoulders and then down to the waist. And it's actually kind of open in the back like a V. So it's really good at keeping cool on these hot summer days. So that is our first little item. And I think I have a couple of different sizes in stock in this particular um, outfit. All right, our next outfit I just got in as well, and it is so cute. It's one of my favorite prints, but it is a two-piece set. So here is the top, just a cute little like t-shirt style top with little cap sleeves with the little ruffles. I love that detailing on little chubby arms, so sweet and cute. And then little ruffles around the top, cute little sprinkle print. And then to go with that, we have these amazing little bubble shorts. These are so cute on, and they look good in a variety of sizes and ages. Again, they're stretchy super comfortable and soft. They do have precious little pockets. How sweet is that? And then as you can see, they kind of bubble um, around the bottom, but just so cute. Love this color scheme. I know it's so funny. I'm not even that big of a donut lover, but anything donut printed, I'm a sucker for. And I love pastels. So that is our second little outfit. So whenever I am shopping for the boutique, I try to look for prints that are really unique and different, not just something you see everywhere. And when I saw this set come in, I knew I just had to order it for the shop because it's so cute and perfect for these super hot days coming up in July and August. But it again is a two piece set and I also have this same print in a dress too. But look at how cute this is. It's like a little ice cream stand print with different cones, cute little stand. I just thought this was so fun and so perfect for summer. And one thing, like I said, the clothes are made to grow with your child. But the good thing is, is you can wear this like a tunic style, but as your kid grows, they can wear it again just as a top. But this print is so cute. 
And then these are the matching little bottoms. They're um, little leggings, again, stretchy and soft. And I love the little ruffles down at the bottom. These are kind of capri style, but just a super cute little set. And like I said, I do also have that print in a dress. The last print I'm going to show you is, again, I think I've already said one of my favorites, but again, I just love these prints. Um, me and my lo mom love lighthouses, so I knew that I had to, again, get this print in, but check it out. It's kind of a simple print, but it is just so pretty. It's just a nice lightweight dress pair it with a big bow and it would be beautiful for like beach pictures but it's also just comfy and casual enough to run around and play in too so again it's just kind of a little flared out dress little flutter sleeves up around the top and again i love all the different little lighthouses so cute for summer and I do have this one in, in a couple of sizes too. So again, thank you guys so much for checking out the haul. Go ahead and check out our website. It's linked below as well as our Instagram. But now let's go ahead and get to some fun crafting. So before we get started with our little donut craft, I thought I'd kind of go over the materials you need. And as you can see, this is pretty simple. So you just need some watercolor paint. Um, our watercolor paint is well loved. We use it all the time. Um, some Elmer's white glue, and then also a pretty good amount of salt. And I just buy the cheap salt at the grocery store. I think this whole container was maybe like 50 cents. And then you're going to need some brown um, paper, brown paper bag, or even just an old like shopping grocery bag that is um, the brown paper. And that is all you really need. You also need some scissors because we are going to have to do a little bit of cutting. So I've taken my brown paper bags and I've just cut them into little squares. And now I'm going to fold them over and just cut out little half circles and then open it to create our little donut shape. I'm doing this because my little one's not yet two, so she's not at the cutting stage. But if you have an older child, this is a great way to practice some of those early cutting skills. So I've taken my paper square and folded it in half. And now I'm going to fold it again, and as you can see, I've just traced like a little um, piece off the end and off the top, and that's what I'm going to cut along to make my little donut shape. So now I have my cute little donut shape, and for the next step, it can get a little messy, so I am going to use a little baking sheet that I'm going to set this on, um, and this is where the fun begins. Like I said, because my little one is still not even two yet, she is um, 21 months, I'm going to prep most of this for her. But if you have an older child, even like preschool age, I really recommend having them do this just because it's part of the fun and it's great fine motor work. But you're going to take your glue and this is going to be like your donut glaze. So on each of your little donuts that you make, you can do kind of a different design, a different pattern, but we're going to pretend like this is our glaze. And I think I'm going to do like swirls, maybe like this looks very donut glazy. But again, as you can see, as I'm squeezing, it's a great little fine motor exercise. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do any type of perfect thing. Just let your kid get creative. And then you're going to take your salt, and this is why I recommend using um, a baking sheet or some type of mat because you're going to pour your salt. Oops, I almost ripped out the little mouthpiece um, all over the glue. And you want to cover it pretty generously. Get all of that nice and covered. And then dust that off. And then what you're going to do is actually paint 
the salt that is on top of the glue and you'll see what happens but it's just really neat the salt kind of absorbs the watercolor and you can kind of see the color spreading and as it dries it like spreads even more so this is just a really fun relaxing time consuming activity it's always good when your kids are entertained for a while so I'm gonna leave this out for a little bit. You can go ahead and paint right away. You don't have to let it dry. But since my little one, she's actually napping while I'm prepping this, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry a little bit. And then when she wakes up from nap, I will have her start painting. Um, but when you paint, you're you know, gonna paint traditionally how you do with watercolor, dip in the water, dip in the paint, but you're just gonna dip paint the salt on the glue. You don't want to like smear just because that will start smearing around the glue. But we'll come back once nap time is up and I will show you kind of the rest of the little project. Wow. Does that look pretty? Did a great job. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. Okay, paint your donut. Can you paint your donut? Uh, oh no. <laughs> can. Don't do that. All right, it is day number two and my little one is napping so I am in prep mode and these are the ingredients that we are going to need today for our cake batter ice cream flavored play-doh. We're going to be using a recipe that I got from the imagination tree. I've used it in my classroom several times. It's my favorite recipe um, but let me go ahead and give you guys a rundown of the ingredients you're going to need. So for the base of the play-doh you're going to need flour, salt, and cream of tartar. We're also going to use oil. I'm going to have to go with my olive oil because I totally forgot to get vegetable oil, but typically you would use vegetable oil. Hopefully this works out today. And then since we are making it cake um, ice cream flavored, I have the cake batter flavor and then I also have some sprinkles. We're also going to use some hot water and that's all we're going to need today. To get started, we are going to do two cups of flour. All right, so we got cup one and cup two. All right, so two cups of flour, and now we are going to do half a cup of salt. The next thing you're gonna add is two tablespoons of cream of tartar. Now that we have all of our dry ingredients mixed in, I'm going to add our two tablespoons of olive oil, and then we're gonna add one to one and a half cups of hot water. All right, I added in one tablespoon, and here is our second one. The recipe does call for boiling water, so you need it to be pretty hot. And I am going to start with one cup and see how that does. And then if I need to, I'll add the additional half cup. Now, before we add any of our fun ingredients with the cake batter flavoring and the sprinkles, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this up and let it get a little more solid and cool down. And like I said, I'm doing this while my little one naps. I want this to kind of be a little surprise for her when she wakes up. She's not yet two, 
Um, but if you have a child that is a school age or a preschooler, I really recommend making this with them. There's so many fun learning things you can tie into this with um, the sensory aspect, going over the five senses, measuring, um, all different kinds of things, making predictions about what it's going to feel like, what's going to happen. So definitely do that um, together and have them be a part of the process. But I will be talking about the texture and the color and the smell as I play with it with my little one. We may be cutting out different shapes, um, those kind of things. So, sorry, I know the camera is shaking because it is sitting up on my table right now and I'm mixing this. But let me go ahead and get this going and then we will add in the flavoring. All right, so I am pretty happy with the texture here. I don't think I'm gonna add any more water. So I did just the one cup, but I'm actually gonna take it out with my hands now that I've kind of loosely mixed it and just start kneading it um, to really get it that nice uh, Play-Doh consistency and texture. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our super yummy smelling cake batter flavor. And now that I think about it, I probably should have added this in before I mixed it, but it's okay because we're gonna knead the dough now and it will mix in evenly. Anyways, it looks like this is gonna add a little color too. So I'm gonna kind of mix this up again and then just start kneading it with my hands. But definitely next time I'm gonna add my flavoring when I add all the other wet ingredients. All right, the Play-Doh has cooled a little bit, so I sprinkled in some sprinkles, and now I'm just gonna knead those in, and then I'll probably take the whole thing out and kind of knead it in my hand a little bit. And before I let my little one play with it, I will probably let it cool down just so it loses a little bit of the stickiness. Um, but yeah, it smells amazing. So here is our finished product. I did spritz my hands with a little um, cooking spray oil just so it doesn't stick to my hands so much. Um, but as soon as it cools, it's really not sticky, but it's a good consistency and texture and it's cute with the little sprinkles. Definitely kind of has that buttercream cake color now and this will be so fun for my little one to play with this afternoon. I know it'll keep her entertained and she'll be excited to enjoy this. So anyways, thank you guys so much for crafting with me today. Caroline, what do you think of the Play-Doh? Play-Doh.